Hello and welcome once more my friends to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest news from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Unfortunately we're going to begin things with a bit of a downer from Intel as there's yet another security vulnerability. Yes, yes, I know, I can hear your groans of, oh, for God's sake, from over here. But what do we have this time? Well, we have a vulnerability which has been dubbed Cash Out, which has been named after the exploitation's ability to leak data stored inside the cache memory of the CPU. It has also been given a much less catchy name by the CVE Identifier System. It has been called CVE 2020-0549 L1D Eviction Sampling L1DES Leakage. And it currently has a CVSS score of 6.5, which basically is a rating of its severity. So not great, not terrible, I suppose you could say. So despite the fact that Intel has, of course, does a, done a lot of patching for similar exploits um, that have been found on their processors, Cash Out has still managed to slip through the cracks. So how does Cash Out actually affect you? Well, as I've already said, it does steal data from the L1 cache, but it does so selectively. Instead of waiting for the data to become available, it can even choose which data it wants to leak. And it can violate almost every hardware-based security domain, meaning that the kernel, co-resident VMs and SGX or software guard extensions are in trouble. Now, Intel have provided a micro-update to address the shortcomings of the architecture, and they have also helpfully provided a list of processes which are affected by this new vulnerability. So the TLDR, but of course you can find a link in the description below this video to the cashout.com page as well as the Intel page which gives you all the information you may require. But the TLDR is that this will affect CPUs from Skylake slash Cascade Lake onward but Broadwell and earlier are safe. So as I said, Intel have already released a microcode update as well as advised um, OS operators. But once again, you can find more information on the cashoutattack.com link as well as the um, software developer zone page from Intel as well. So go find those linked below. And speaking of security vulnerabilities, Intel is actually issuing a patch for the patch for zombie load. Now that's a bit of a blast from the past. Intel first became aware of this vulnerability about 18 months ago. But despite that, Intel still hasn't successfully patched the underlying problem. It's had not one, but two attempts at actually doing so. But they made an announcement yesterday that they were going to be issuing yet another update to solve an issue that they are calling, quote, Microarchitectural Data Sampling, or MDS. Intel said that this update is going to be made available in the quote coming weeks and is also intended to fix the two methods to exploit Intel processors via MDS. So let's just hope, fingers and toes and eyes crossed, that the third time is the charm and zombie load will finally, finally be fully patched out. But let's move on, shall we, from the doom and gloom to the hope of the future, as we have a little something from NVIDIA. So what we have is some more information thanks to Rogame, who has been ever the fountain of useful information as of late. And this time we have a Geekbench listing showing a GTX 1650 Ti notebook GPU. The Geekbench listing, which of course you can see on screen and is also linked in the description below, basically shows us the specifications of the 1650 Ti. Once again, this is the notebook variant of this GPU. So what do we actually see? Well, we see 1,024 CUDA cores, a 1.5 gigahertz GPU clock, and 4 gigs of GDDR6 memory. Interestingly, however, we can also glean something from the fact that the processor for this Lenovo notebook was a i7-10750H, 6 cores, 12 threads, at 2.6 gigahertz. So, seems that in the near future we are going to be getting a 1650 Ti notebook with a 10th gen Intel mobile processor. So with that said, let's move on to a brief little something from AMD's Dr. Lisa Su. So basically what we have here is that Cisco has appointed Dr. Lisa Su to their board of directors today. And she said, they said rather, sorry, should I say, quote, Lisa is an accomplished business leader with deep expertise in the semiconductor industry. We look forward to our contribution to Cisco's board 
and our business as we continue to develop groundbreaking technologies and a new internet for the 5G era that will help our customers innovate faster than ever before. Now, it must be stressed here that she's not moving from AMD to Cisco. She's just been added to their board of directors. Is this a precursor to some larger move? Of course, you may recall some time ago there was those rumours that Lisa was actually going to be leaving um, AMD, of course, she has served as their CEO for quite some time now and is been doing a pretty damn good job, if I do say so myself. Um, but that's tough to say. I'm not willing to speculate on that. It is possible that they could be looking to that in the future or it could just be that they want her expertise. You know, she has a lot of experience, as they themselves said. We'll have to wait and see, of course, what this brings to the company in the future, but still interesting nonetheless. I'm going to move over now to a little bit of a gaming news, uh, something very close to my heart next with Silent Hill. So a little bit of background in case you missed it, you have undoubtedly seen the reports that Konami was working on at least one new Silent Hill game. This was mentioned by Aesthetic Gamer on Twitter, who also starred in Paul's video recently where they talked about the PS5. Go check out the video from yesterday if you haven't seen it. So, they said initially, quote, in other news, while I'm dropping this stuff, and I think I can talk about this, I mentioned there is a couple of new Silent Hill games in the works. Konami about two years ago reached out to various developers to pitch ideas for two Silent Hill games. One a soft reboot of the franchise, the other an episodic Telltale Until Dawn style game to go alongside the reboot. I don't know anything more than that though, but I sure do hope Konami's given it the appropriate budget and found the right developer to make those games succeed. But obviously, we need to cast our minds back even further than that, because there was a trademark protection for Silent Hill registered last August by Konami, which was reported by Game Rant. Now obviously that doesn't really mean much, they're just kind of hedging their bets in case they wanted to ever go back to it, they have the legal option to do so. But Konami have actually responded to the rumours and reports surrounding Silent Hill. They said, quote, We cannot share anything at this point, but we are listening to customer feedback and considering ways to provide the next title. So that doesn't really tell us anything at all, except for the very interesting fact that they are at least considering a new entry. Has development begun, or is it only in pre-production? Are they even greenlighting a project? It's really hard to say. I take that statement to mean that they are in the pre-production stage where it could all still be scrapped. You know, they're looking to see, okay, how could we reboot the franchise? How could we make sure it's successful? blah de blah de blah Now, a soft reboot could potentially work. It depends how it's done. I think a remake, not a remaster, a remake of Silent Hill 1 and 2 would potentially go down well if they give it the Capcom treatment of Resident Evil 2. Because obviously, the remasters, <laughs> don't talk to me about the Silent Hill remasters, okay? Just don't. Not great. Let's just leave it at that. So, a remake could be good, or a re reboot could also be interesting, but I would still want it to feel like Silent Hill. You know, the, the latest Silent Hill games were... Like, Downpour was not bad. I didn't mind that one, actually. But Homecoming? Don't talk to me about Homecoming. That was awful. And most of them were pretty bad. Let's just be real. And Konami, they've lost a lot of trust. I, I don't really trust them that, that much, to be honest. Because, well, after Kojima left to make Death Stranding, they had their chance to prove, we don't need Kojima to make a good Metal Gear game. Let's do it, guys. And what do they do? Metal Gear Survive. And I'm just like, no. So, I am hopeful, but I am remaining extremely cautiously hopeful because I would love a new Silent Hill game but I don't want it to be like Homecoming. I want it to be like Silent Hill 2. Or Silent Hill 3. That would be great. Especially of course since the Silent Hills game was put in the bin along with everything else Kojima was working on. So what, what do you guys think of this one? Do you think that Konami would consider it? I think they would to be honest. I feel like they are aware that if they get the right people they managed to convince some of the original members of Team Silent, for instance, to work on it, or another developer that could be trusted with it to, to work on it, and it's, it's put in good hands, and it's actually a well-made game, I think it would do extremely well. If it actually looked good, I, I would I would buy the hell out of that game, and I would probably play the hell out of it too. You know, Silent Hill 2 and 3, I'll play more times than I can count. Silent Hill 1 less so, 
because, well, it looks like it's made out of uh, Lego, to, to be honest. The graphics have not aged well. But I would love a new Silent Hill game. I genuinely would. So I have to wait and see. I'm not going to get too hyped yet, because they're not even confirmed that they are working on it. It just kind of sort of sounds like they're considering it. So it, it could very well die in a boardroom and we'll never see anything out, out of it because they decide that it's too much of a risk financially. That is very well a very real possibility as to what could happen. Or we could see in a couple of years a teaser at E3 or what have you. I could literally wax lyrical about this for ages, but I won't. But I'd love to hear your thoughts, guys. Would you play a Silent Hill game or have you lost all faith in Konami? I will not blame you. I have no faith left in them either. I just have that tiny little seed of hope that we'll see a good Silent Hill game again. Let me know your thoughts though, guys, and thank you so much for watching. As always, your support means a huge deal. But do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.